Welcome to RSM Gaming. I'm Rush, and this is going to be a little bit of a look at getting you started in DCS. Now, uh, it's fairly early in the morning on a Sunday, so I'm trying to convince myself I don't need a third cup of coffee, so you have to forgive me if the production is a little bit slow, we don't get to the point right away. Just like right now, I've already started rambling. So, um, now, what I want this video to be about is uh, just if you just wanting to give DCS a go, um, this is really just to get your controller set up. Um, and uh, I'll show you some bindings, I'll show you a few things, and really how to navigate around through DCS. There are a few little nuances with DCS, and, and setting the control binds um, in some cases are not just as simple as just pressing a few buttons and away you go, specifically depending on what controller you're using. Uh, speaking of what controllers I'm using, um, this will be demonstrating basically an X55, X56 um, setup, um, but uh, I'm only using an X56 throttle. Um, my actual um, joystick I'm using is a, a VKB Gladiator. Uh, there will be a video on an actual review on this, even though I've been using it now for like three, four months. But uh, it's a phen phenomenal stick. Way, way better than the X55 stick. So anyway, X50, X, X, X56 um, throttle is what we're going to be binding and um, the uh, VKB Gladiator. Uh, I'll try and go through some of the differences. The other thing is, is I have made a, a map um, for my bindings, and I'll go over a little bit um, of my theory behind those bindings uh, once we get into it. Um, so, yeah, let's let, let, let's get into it. Let's um let's start. Let's say I'm taking th 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 again at the beginning. Uh, this is a video as if. You've never seen DCS before, you've loaded it up, you saw the Spitfire was on sale for $25 for an absolute bargain. If you haven't bought it for $25, I mean, this is going to be irrelevant if you're watching this a few days from now, but uh, uh, if you're watching it now, whatever. Spitfire, $25, how could you not want it? Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's get into, um, before we even start with the bindings, we've loaded up, um, you can change all these displays later and all of that, but uh, anyway, the first thing we're going to do is, um, I just need to make sure I am recording, I am, so excuse me if I have to look away for a while. First thing we're going to do is get an aircraft set up. Now, the aircraft I'm going to use here is a P-51 as well as a Spitfire. Um, they're two really good start-out aircraft, and, uh, well, I have an affinity for piston-powered aircraft, so uh, they're what we're going to use. So the first thing we're going to do, let me just do this again, is we'll just go up to the cog up here, which is our main settings of the simulator. And uh, before we go into, uh, this is a separate video about settings and stuff like that. Um, we've got tabs across the top of the, the, the screen here, which is going to control um, everything from aircraft to controls to um, visuals to all sorts of things like that. It's audio, every, everything is here. Before we touch the controls, um, we need to go over the particular aircraft because, well, there's a whole heap of inbuilt um, automatic flight control stuff that's a that's there to help you. Um, I say, I should say help, because uh, when you have some of these settings on, that makes some of the aircraft nearly impossible to fly. So uh, where we're going to go here is to special. That's definitely the one I press there. We're going to go to the special tab and we're going to look for these two aircraft that we're going to go. So let's just start with the P-51D. Um, so I'll look down the side here and, 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 and let me see if I can get my little pen working here. So uh, this is the list of our aircraft that we have installed. And uh, what I want to do is go down and we're going to select the P-51 as that's where we're going to start. So let's go ahead and select the P-51. These are the first three settings um, that we really need to um, look at here. We have auto rudder. We also have takeoff assistance with the slider. And we have this customized cockpit thing. We don't need to worry about that because we're in an English aircraft, but uh, in another video or um, look on the forums, you can actually um, uh, put in a customized cockpit here with a different look or perhaps um, your language. Uh, if you're uh, French or Russian or whatever, you can put in um, a, a cockpit in your native language. So anyway, let's go over these two options. First one, auto rudder. Um... This thing is very useful. Uh, auto rudder is very useful, but I keep it ticked off because I have rudder pedals. Now, if you are a simmer and you don't have rudder pedals, um, the Mustang and the Spitfire are very, very hard to fly without rudder pedals. You just don't have the fidelity out of a twist grip, out of a twist grip throttle um, that you do with rudder pedals. So I, I flew the P-51 in combat missions online for, I would say, probably six to seven months without having rudder pedals, and I was okay. I got some kills. I wasn't the world's greatest pilot, but uh, I got some kills, and I just um, focused on ground targets. But auto rudder I used, and it was fantastic. 
what it actually does is it just adds um, rudder to keep the aircraft coordinated. It doesn't actually steer the aircraft with the rudder. So what that means is on takeoff, you still have to apply some rudder to cancel out the torque effect uh, and uh, P effect as the tail comes up. However, you don't need to put in all of those fine adjustments to keep the tail tracking directly behind the front of the aircraft. Uh, and this is important because if you don't have that fidelity with a twist grip throttle, um, being uh, that you don't have rudder pedals, then this is very, very useful. So if you're running a twist grip um, uh, uh, joystick, uh, I would recommend turning this on. It is actually helpful. Um, it's not a hindrance in in most cases. Um, the thing that is a huge hindrance is this takeoff assistance. If you know or have a, a vague understanding of how to fly a tail dragger, i.e. stick aft aileron into the wind and unload and blah, blah, blah. If you have a, any idea of how to fly a tail dragger, turn this crap off. You don't want it. It's going to make you wreck your aircraft more times that you're going to successfully take off. Um, especially if you have auto rudder turned in. For some reason, these two these two things don't talk to each other. So auto rudder kicks in, then takeoff assistant said, no, that's too much rudder. And all of a sudden, you're going down the runway and your tail's doing this and you're wondering what the hell's happening. So only have one of these on. Uh, and in my opinion, never have this one on. So if you're going to have auto rudder on, put a tick in it. Takeoff assistant, don't ever have it on. Um, if you are struggling to um, get the aircraft into the air, um, being that it's still P effect and um, um, torque effect uh, is still making your uh, takeoffs a mess, still do not turn on takeoff assistance. Learn how to fly a tail dragger first. When you turn on this takeoff assistance, it just... Um, how can I say, you're not going to learn how to fly the aeroplane with this thing on to any degree with the slider. Auto rudder, you're going to learn. You're going to need to put in some twist here for um, torque effect and P effect. When the tail comes up, the tail's going to want to slide a little bit as the um, the P effect changes, and you're going to have to put in a little bit of twist grip. But then when you're in the air, you pretty much don't need to touch your rudder. You can just um, fly the aircraft. So uh, twist grip, use auto rudder, no takeoff assistance. If you've got rudder pedals, auto rudder, turn that crap off. This is the fundamental to actually having successful um, flights. And in fact, uh, I'm a sucker for it where uh, if I have updated um, DCS and I've um, lost settings or whatnot, I'll jump in an airplane and be like, oh yeah, I really like to fly the Focke-Wulf 190. I'll jump in the thing, I'll try and take off and oh yeah just get to about 40 knots and all of a sudden the aircraft cartwheels on me and I'm like, what the, what, am, am I really that bad? I probably am. But no, typically it's this and uh, you can see if I go into my Fock Wolf thing, this takeoff assistance is at 100% and uh, it's not going to do you any help whatsoever. So, um, turn it off. Turn it off. And it's only for um, the tail dragger aircraft you'll see this takeoff assistance. Uh, TF-51, which is just the, the non-armed um, version of the P-51. Uh, what do we got here? 109. Yep, turn that crap off. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, that's another video. So I'll go back to our P51. So this is what I'd recommend um, is auto rudder on, twist grip. You get the idea. After we've done that, we can now move on and actually achieve some things. The best way now to bind controls, the old way was clunky as hell, where uh, you'd come here into the control settings and you weren't able to bind controls when you were sitting in the cockpit. You had to exit the aircraft, load in, back and forth. It was an absolute mess. So uh, the, the first thing I would actually recommend is load up the aeroplane now. Come up over to the side here, go to instant action, and uh, pick yourself the aircraft, the P-51D. Let's just use it for the time being. And uh, we're just going to go for a uh, cold start. I, I don't need the engine running, I just need to be able to look around the cockpit here. So I don't know whatever that town was, but we're just going to go here for a cold start. We're going to jump up into the aircraft, and this is going to help us... Um, bind controls. I'm going to show you how to do this if you've never seen the aircraft, you don't know anything about it. Because binding the controls um, is a little bit cathartic, but you'll also um, get a good cockpit familiarization around the aircraft. Because you're going to start having an understanding where all of these switches and buttons are and what they actually do. And why that's important is in DCS, uh, we can mouse control in um, any of the payware aircraft. The, the TF-51, uh, unfortunately, does not have... Well, maybe it does. 
No, the TF-51 does have, um, uh, does actually have, uh, click buttons, I think. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, it's a good thing if you've never seen the aircraft and you're like me, you ignore manuals. Uh, you can jump into the aeroplane and just have a little look around and get a feel. Uh, and uh, have an idea where um, buttons are placed. Uh, it's probably going to get noisy. This uh, frog foot over there is going to fire up. So we're in the aircraft. Now I want to start binding some controls. I'm going to start with the axes first. We can see the stick is deflected all the way to the wrong side. It's bugging out. I haven't bound any controls. It's pretty bad. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just turn off my eye tracker here. And let's go into um, the controls. So in the middle of the, the menu here, uh, I'm actually just going to um, close this canopy. It just might make it a little bit quieter with the canopy closed with that jet out there so I don't have to yell over the top of it. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go and uh, get into the um, uh, menu settings here. So I'm just going to press escape, bring up the menu, and we can see we can adjust controls. For any of you old DCSs, um, you'll know that uh, this button here is like a lifesaver. So we're going to go in, we're going to adjust the controls, and this is our main um, control adjustment page. So here is another little nuance that um, is um, missed, is uh, there are actually, it will, for some aircraft there are actually two flight models. They have a simulator version of the flight model and they have an arcade version. There are separate binds for each one of those individual flight models. Same cockpit, same buttons, same everything. But, uh, yeah, one is um, one is arcade, one is sim. And that reminds me I need to actually um, go back to the main menu and show you some more things. So, like I said, I probably should have had that third coffee. So, here we go. Let's come up to this top button here. And uh, we'll use our fancy pants little, little pen here. And uh, we're going to come here and we're going to look for our aircraft. And uh, we can see P-51D, that's the aircraft we're in. We've got game and sim. Uh, game is like arcade, like you're playing War Thunder. Sim is your um, flying an aircraft simulation. So when you're setting your binds, um, don't do what I've done before and spend an hour setting all of my binds. Jump into the aircraft and everything's broken. And uh, I'm just about ready to flip a table at that point. So come into here first, select P51D and Sim. Um, make sure it's Sim. Uh, let me backtrack a little. I, I'm going to ruin everyone's everyone's day here, but uh, let's backtrack. Um, we talked to you this sim and arcade. Let me show you where we make these changes. Um, and that's back in the main menu. So uh, we're going to quit here and uh, go back to our main menu here. This is where we define the aircraft um, settings. So... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to commit. Like I said, I'm sorry, guys. Um, I should have done this when we're in the um, the tabs here. The next one we want to go to here is this gameplay tab. Uh, at least we now know there's different flight models. Um, so we're going to go here into the gameplay tab, and uh, this is where we're going to make sure our aircraft is flying correctly as well. So there are some presets, and, well, in all honesty, it's simple to just press which one you want, simulation or game. Press simulation. If you're watching this video, you're probably a simmer. Uh, you don't really care about game physics. Um, it's just no interest to in me. It's probably no interest to you. So uh, go for the preset of simulation if you like, and it will just do everything for you. Um, you press simulation. Uh, the only difference it had from my setting is it had no birds. I like having some birds floating around. So we'll select some birds up there. But you can see what it does is it turns off um, flight mode and assists and stuff like that. Uh, so you can turn off tooltips as well if they annoy you and uh, all of these other things. But uh, come in here, make sure you make these changes, or otherwise you might be flying under a game, um, a, 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 a lesser, a lesser high quality um, flight model. Um, so come into gameplay, make sure you set this to simulation. Uh, and this is what I mean by those nuances right at the start. There's things like this where you go, you don't know about until you've been playing DCS for you know a couple of months. You go, geez, this isn't really that hard. Everyone says it's so hard. And then you, you look down here and you realize you're flying on game mode. And yeah. So come in here, just press the simulation thing. Uh, if you have your own preferences, um, if you have your own preferences along here, uh, avionics, um, language, and all these other things, uh, you can set these here. You can have it at native tongue. We can make it English. Um, if you um, want metric, which doesn't really work here unless you're... Um, set your settings how you'd like them. 
Uh, GFX, I like them in simulation. Uh, model enlargement. Uh, I would, if you're going to be playing this online, bump this up. Uh, it will help you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go large because it's an option and I don't like getting shot down from people I can't see. So, uh, okay, now we've done that, we can go back to binding our control. So we know that there's a game and, and there's a simulation um, flight model. So back into instant action, we're going to take out our P-51 and uh, let's go for a cold start. And load her up. Now, the 51 is one of the longest running models DCS have. I think it they spent a lot, a lot of time uh, with, with this model and... Uh, it's only just recently, actually. I think they've had it for like two, three, maybe even more. Maybe three, four years or something like that. I don't know. But it's only just recently they've started getting the flight model correct. There was a a point there where um, the aircraft was severely um, limited to uh, airspeed and it didn't accelerate right and it didn't have the correct drag model and all these things. And now it's actually uh, a joy to fly and actually somewhat competitive against, say, the, um, uh, the Focke Wolf 190. Still not competitive against the 109, but uh, um, yeah, it's a good aircraft. Let's bind some controls. So, um, we've closed up a canopy just so we don't hear all that um, noise. We're going to go to adjust our controls here. We're going to confirm that we're binding for the simulator version because this is the flight model we're flying. And now I'm going to want to go to the axes. Um, and so, that is set here. This is this drop-down box is kind of like a, a, a sub-menu of your um, systems where um, you can have axes commands, which can be flight controls or anything else, uh, or you could also have um, button commands, and they're separated to, say, airframe, engine, um, weapons, employment, stuff like that. Um, but let's just go ahead and show you. So the first one I'm going to do is I want to get my axes correct. So I'm going to go here to axes command, and I can see it's quite a short list. And I can also see there's some random bindings in here. Now, if this is you loading up as well, there will be random bindings and they will be wrong. It tries to do an auto thing, and it just does it wrong. Like, just for example here, uh, uh, I am not moving my throttle. I'm just moving random axes on my um, my throttle here, and uh, that's what's moving my throttle lever off to the side. In fact, this is me moving my throttle, and it's moving the elevator. Seems legit, right? So don't ever load up an aeroplane and uh, hope for the best in DCS. Uh, you'll be sorely mistaken. You'll start trying to fly it, and then all of a sudden you'll roll over on your back and be a flaming wreck beside the runway. So uh, don't rely on it. Um, so, okay, back to P-51. Let's go Axis Commands. And uh, let's go ahead and clear all this stuff off. Now, I I'm not going to clear these because this is my, um, my eye tracker and other things. But uh, all of these commands here, assume they're all wrong. All of them are wrong. All of them. Don't try and individually pick them out. You'll just um, end up splitting hairs and it's going to hurt you. Um, so anyway, go right up to the top here and uh, select any one of these um, boxes. You just need to select it once with a single click and then just press this button up here, clear category. And what we should see is it's just going to completely delete all of the Axie commands here. And it sure has. So I'm going to do the same here. Let me go ahead and define this first. So these columns, the columns along here are individual controllers. So these are my rudder pedals, rudder pedals. This is my joystick, we just put joy, and this is my throttle. If, for instance, you had um, other controllers as well, like a head tracker, you'll see those over here. Or if you had double ups, you could actually run two throttles with this simulator if you wanted. If you were not happy with one X56, you could go ahead and actually plug in a second one and still actually have binds for it. Uh, you actually can here. Um, but, but the columns work like this with each individual controller. So anything down here, any axes down here is for my MFG crosswinds. Anything down here is for my VKB Gladiator stick, and anything down here is for the X56 throttle. Anything in these columns. That's the way it kind of works. So let's go ahead and clear this column here for the VKB Gladiator. Again, any one of these buttons along here, clear the category. 
Yes. Again, uh, X56 throttle, I don't want it. We'll clear that category. And you can see we now have a completely empty um, uh, control bindings, which is where we want to start. Uh, like I said, you don't want to faff around with the ones that auto loads. They're all going to be wrong. There might be one axis that is actually there that's correct, and you have to try and find out what one. It's just not worth it. Just delete them all, start again. So uh, let's just start with the simple stuff and uh, go from there. So, all right. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep this simple. So we're in the access commands. We're in the access commands in this drop-down tab. And now I'm going to set um, roll and pitch. That's what I want to do. So elevator and aileron. Let's go ahead and set that. So I'm going to have a look down here, this action side, this column over here. And uh, I'm going to look for, let's just go with elevator or pitch. And, uh, well, there it is there. So here's our pitch, uh, here's our pitch control. Uh, fantastic. So pitch control, what, what one of my controllers uh, along the top here being my um, uh, rudder pedals, um, joystick, or throttle, which one of these do I want to actually control pitch with? Well, it's pretty obvious it wants to be my joystick. So I come along, I'm going to select joystick here, and now I need to set the actual bind. Now, we can do this a few ways. You can either know the binds, or you can sit here and spam away until something happens. I like the spam away option because it means I don't need to know as much, uh, and I can make things happen. It just takes more time. I'll show you what I mean by the spam away thing here in a second. So pitch... I'm going to put this on my joystick, and all I'm going to do is double-click this box. It's going to bring up an assignment panel. Uh, yes, more panels upon panels. Now, action is pitch. That's fine. What I'm going to do is go ahead and then just click here in this key button switch, just that little pad there. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to click there, make sure it's the active. Um, I don't need to select from this drop-down, right? I, I don't need to select from this drop-down. I just want to make sure I'm active there. And all I'm going to do is move the actual axes, but I need to put it through its entire range. I need to take it from neutral, go all the way aft and all the way forward. So I'll go all the way aft. And you see when I go all the way aft, nothing actually happens. But if I go all the way forward, now it's confirmed that that is the correct axis. So you need to move it through its entire range. Rather, what it, what it's really doing is kind of like a, a double a double check. So if you just if you move the control just a little bit to the left or the right, well, it might think that that's the actual control. But if you move it forward and aft through its entire control range, there we go. It goes okay. That is definitely what you wanted to select, sir. Good job. So let's go um, roll, okay? So uh, let's go ailerons. Um, so we'll just go down the side here, find roll, and come back to our thing. And we're going to do the same thing. Again, if I just roll it to the left, and I can spam it to the left all day long. Um, let me just show you. Spam, 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 spam. I'm just moving to the left, you're right. Um, but it's not until I move it to the right, your left, confusing, um, that's when it'll actually bind it. So move the control through the entire range, uh, and then it will automatically set the bind for you. Wunderbar, right? And now, what do I want to do? What is my third axis? Rudder. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be on a different control, right? So here's our rudder, and I'm going to be putting this on the MFG crosswinds. Same thing, going to open it up, press in here, and I'm just going to spam my rudder pedals all the way to the left. And did you see what actually happened there? It actually had Joy R or something like that, and then it changed its mind to RZ. The reason why is when I move the controls, I must have just touched the brake just a little bit. Um, and just touching that brake, it might have immediately thought, aha, you actually want the brake, the brake there to be the actual rudder, and I don't. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cancel that and do it again, just to be certain. So make sure my heels are on the floor, just like if I was flying the real aeroplane. And there we go. I move it through the entire control range, and we get um, Joy RZ. That's going to be the right one. Perfect. Done. Okay, so let's just check the controls in the aircraft. So we'll go OK. I'll undock my uh, control thingy there. And uh, you can see the, the stick was a little bit off to the left. So let's just, con uh, let's just check here. So there's full forward, full aft, full right, full left. And we can see my rudder pedals are doing rudder pedal things in the background there. And even have a look outside and make sure left is up. And let me go right. 
The riders up, looks good. And go to an external view and see our little elevators are working fine and our rudder pedals are in correct sense. Just like we're doing the walk around of an aircraft or a pre-flight check. Um, uh, just because it's a sim doesn't mean you don't need to check your controls. Um, you want to have some fun, invert the controls and try and fly an aircraft with the uh, elevators, uh, the ailerons installed correctly. Uh, it's almost impossible. It's very, very, very difficult. Anyway. So we've got some axes, so I could almost go flying right now. Everything else in this cockpit is actually um, mouse clickable. So I can take my mouse here, and I can click on these switches, and, and do all sorts of things like that. Switches, whatnot. I wonder if... No, I cannot. Yeah, the switches... Everything in here is uh, clickable to make things work. Uh, so... Now I want to set some other controls that are important to this aircraft. Uh, and it's an important concept to grasp is, um, I'll start segueing into this, is with my bindings, I actually set almost the same bindings for every aircraft. But just about every aeroplane we fly here is going to have pitch, roll, rudder. Every aircraft is going to have a throttle. Every aircraft is going to have some kind of trim, uh, whether it's in all three axes, be aileron, elevator, rudder, or if it's just going to be one, just maybe an elevator. Um, you don't know, but they all have those. And just about all of these piston engine aircraft have some kind of radiator control or um, cow flaps or similar things to that to keep the engine nice and cool. Uh, so I try and keep my bindings um, the same for every aircraft, whether I'm flying a Mustang, a Mirage 2000, or anything like that. I don't want my buttons to be moving around on my controls. It's a real-life thing as well. Um, it's a real-life um, uh, cockpit design and ergonomics, uh, is that having things scattered all over the place when you're jumping in lots of aeroplanes uh, is a bad thing. Uh, and so... I try and minimize that because, well, hey, we flight sim. We'll, uh, I'll be flying a Mustang now, and then we'll be flying a, a, a 777 uh, in 10 minutes' time. So uh, there's different buttons in different places. However, I set my buttons just about all the same for every particular aircraft. And how um, I'll go ahead and demonstrate this is, well, let's go, let's go over those important things that you have to bind, and then you'll have the skills to go ahead and do everything else. And this is why I was saying it's actually a little bit cathartic, and it's a good idea to get an understanding of the aircraft um, setting the binds in DCS, because these models are high-fidelity models. Um, the, the engine models are near perfect, the flight models are near perfect. Like, you have to spend time learning these aircraft. You can't just buy this plane, expect to know how to start it up by fumbling your way through the cockpit, and then get it off the ground. Uh, I'd be very surprised if anyone could do that. Uh, it's you, you need to understand the aeroplane. So let's do that. So let's go over the things in the Mustang that are important uh, for you as a pilot. So I've set the main controls. They're obviously important for every aircraft, the, the primary flight controls. Uh, and then we'll go into our ancillary or secondary flight controls, um, being our throttle, um, our flap control, and our, um, our trim. Trim, of course. So let's go in to that. Um, let's do that. So the next thing that is super important in this aircraft, uh, I would say, is trim. If you don't trim the Mustang, uh, you're going to be a flaming wreck at the side of a runway. It'll take off a landing 90% of the time. So let's go and back in and adjust our controls. Again, making sure we're in the P51D sim up here. And uh, we're going to go back. We're going to do some axis commands. Well, I I'm using an X56. I don't, I, I don't know what you have. If you have a chance to set rudder trim, you need a button for rudder trim. Again, this is for an X56, but you'll get the understanding. I have uh, um, lots of axes available to me, so I can set another axis for this. If you need to set a button, um, like a, um, a POV button on your stick to go left and right for trim, use a button, it's fine. I just have an analog um, thing here to, uh, to use. So uh, I'll show you this new function um, now, instead of going in through all of these individual boxes, is the search function. The search function is, uh, just like anything with aeroplanes, is uh, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't know the right term that you're searching for, you're not going to find it. So uh, <laughs> if I search for, say, um, rudder, uh, example would be like maybe um, fire guns, it's not going to fire anything, because it's not going to find anything when I search for it. The, the terminology in here is fire weapons or something like that, like just to make things difficult. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and search for trim. 
put that in and uh, we can see some stuff here. Uh, all right, so we, we've got some things here. I'm going to go ahead and clear the uh, clear this uh, category. We don't need it. Uh, so, rudder trim. You don't trim this aircraft in rudder. Like I said, you're going to be flaming wreck. So uh, let's go ahead and set this with the X56. Uh, let's go rudder trim left. Ah, okay, yep. Yeah. So um, what we've got here, this is the non-axis controls. Just trying to make sense of this. So these are the non-axis controls. So let's say um, I had a hat. Um, I have a point of view hat, right, where I have an up function, a down function, a left and right. Uh, well, this is where you could set your um, rudder trim left. So this would be rudder left. We'll just put rud left or rud right. And this would be elevator up and elevator down. So if you didn't have the axes uh, for rudder trim, this is how I'd recommend you do it, uh, is because these are the the primary um, trimming that you're going to be doing in the Mustang uh, and the Spitfire as well, uh, any of these um, uh, piston engine aircraft. Well, the 109 doesn't actually have rudder trim, but uh, anyway. So uh, there we go. There, that's how you do it there. For me, uh, I'm going to do this through the axes commands. So I'm going to come here and look for trim rudder. Here it is here. And what are we going to be doing this on? This is going to be on my X56. So again, I'm just going to go rudder trim, look for X56, double click the box, click in here. Now, I set, here's one I prepared earlier. What I'll do is I'll put an annotation um, now, production value hype. I'll put an annotation now uh, over to my website where you can download this and see all of my button bindings. I'm not going to go ahead and go through all of them now um, because uh, this isn't really fleshed out for all of the, the jets. This is more for piston engine aircraft. Sorry, I've got cat allergies. Uh, but uh, this will give you a rough idea. So I'll give you a, um, a, a link to this uh, sometime about now so you can see everything. So this is my uh, Super Duper X56 here. So I always use this twist knob here for rudder trim. And the twist knob ahead of it is always aileron trim. So I've got rudder and aileron. And I'll show you why, why this makes sense to me. Why I have them in this order. Why I don't have them aileron then rudder trim in just a second. One, it's easier for where my hand physically positions. Like I can have my... That's meant to be a thing. That's, that's a hand. You can see I'm not an artist. That was meant to be a hand. But it just makes more sense because you're constantly trimming this aircraft in rudder. So uh, anyway, I'll give you a link to this. So this is these are the buttons I use. And why it makes sense in this particular aircraft is, let me just go ahead and bind the thing. Again, I have to move it through full left and right um, ranges. Uh, and uh, I'll go ahead and do uh, Ella on right now as well. Oh, that's the wrong column. See what I did there? Wrong column, like a noob. And that doesn't look right. There we go. So you can see finally, this is what I mean by the spamming thing. Uh, you can see every now and then it'll pick up a random axes assignment there. And uh, if you just go, oh, okay, there's one. It's popped up right away and you just press OK. It's going to be the wrong one. So I just sit there and spam the thing and wind it back and forward until it does what I want it to do. So I go, join one slider, perfect. So let's have a, uh, another look back down here. This is why I do it in this order, is in the actual aircraft, I have rudder and then aileron. So rudder there and aileron up here. So it makes sense to me where my throttle layout is laid out the same as the aircraft. So now when I go ahead and move the the rudder trim, we can see the rudder trim here is moving left and right. I'll try and find the center position and aileron trim will do the same. We can see it's all doing its thing there. Perfect. Wonderful. All right, uh, what's next? Uh, so they're the other important things. Now I'm going to need some buttons. What else is important that we have in every aeroplane? Gear and flaps. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, just cancel this. And uh, let's bring up our... This thingy again. I do the same thing, this same idea of all of my buttons stay in the same place, specifically in this uh, lower portion uh, of the controller here. These never change no matter I'm flying a 777, uh, anything, anything, a, a super cub or anything, I don't, I don't mind. Is I always have flaps on the outboard side here with flaps up a notch, down a notch, and landing gear. Landing gear up, 
landing gear down. It never changes. I never change it from whatever aircraft I'm in, uh, and I make zero use of this um, this thing here. I've never used this before in my life. The uh, mode select that just adds difficulty that I don't care about. Um, the middle switch uh, is kind of a question mark. Um, it depends what plane I'm on. Um, I usually leave it blank. Um, unless I'm flying in, say, X-plane, and I've got an aircraft with cow flaps or something like that, then maybe I'll use it. Uh, but for the most part, um, this is kind of like question mark. Use it for whatever you want. But uh, I, I would recommend using this mentality of setting the same button for the same thing. No matter what aircraft, what sim you're in, it will make your life a lot easier. So it's these two buttons we'll set next, uh, and uh, I'll maybe set one other um, one other button here so you can get the idea uh, and uh, be able to go ahead and do this yourself. So we'll jump back here into the sim, and uh, let's go ahead and set the landing gear and flap. So just press escape again while I'm in game, uh, adjust the controls here, and now I can use the search function because we're doing a non-axis command. So I'm going to search, and I'm going to search for gear. Uh, landing gear up, down, that's all it has. So what about... Okay, so it only has an up or down button. It only has a toggle button. Only has a toggle button. Um, which is a problem because we have a switch that goes up and down, right? And it would be bad ergonomics for us to have a switch that can go up and down where the up function means both up and down. It's bad. Down, up and down. This would be bad news bears. Bad ergonomics, because how do I know if my gear is up or down, if I select it just up or down? So we're going to set two binds for this. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll talk, well, we're talking about why. Um, what I like doing here is setting this switch up for up and this switch down for down, of course, except when we push this switch, it does the same thing, but uh, just bear with me here for a second. So landing gear up, down, I want to select my controller, we're going to do it in the X56 again, uh, that's a landing light, so let's go ahead and select it, landing gear, uh, I'm going to go down first, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to press the button, and there we go, we see it pops up right away. Sometimes it won't, sometimes you need to sit there and spam the button uh, until it actually registers, and it does get annoying. But, uh, okay, so we've got joy button 11, so I've got a button for down, but I also want a button for up that is different to down, but it has the same function. So I'm going to double press this again, and I'm just going to now press the button in the opposite sense. Joy button 10, we already have 11 there, we're going to go okay, and what we'll see now is we have a double up of buttons. So bringing the switch up will also retract, so pressing the switch up will take the gear up or down, bringing the switch down will take the gear up or down as well, just depending on where the gear currently is. Now why I do this is because um, I don't want to be raising or thinking in my head I'm raising the gear when really I'm lowering it. So it makes sense to me ergonomically. Even though the button, uh, my button here does the same thing whether I move it up or down, um, I still want to keep this idea of having uh, the same controls for each individual aircraft. Other aircraft have a button for up and a button for down. They'll have two entries here instead of this up and down thing. Just keep everything simple and it will work fine. And we'll jump into the aircraft here and show you why it's so... Uh, I actually can't physically move the, the handle. Uh, in the real aircraft, you can move this handle around, but uh, whatever, you get the idea. Um, yeah, okay, so I've set the same button for one... I've set two buttons for one control. That's what I've done. I've set two buttons for one control. So I've got gear. Now what we want to do is um, flaps, right? So we'll come back in, we'll search, and we'll search for flaps. And here we go. Now we can see we've got a flaps up function and a flaps down function. We need to go ahead and set that. So flaps down, uh, bringing the switch down. So I'll go ahead and open it up. I'll press the button down. We get joy button 7, sure. And then we'll go flaps up, joy button 6, sweet. So I'll just jump into the aircraft here and look at our flap lever, which is back here. And we'll move it up. You can see one, one button push is one detent and I'll move it down. Perfect. One button up, one button down. 
Perfect. All right. What else would I deem as important in this aircraft? Well, to start this plane in... Well, I haven't even done the throttles yet. How noob. Uh, let's go ahead and do the throttle and the prop pitch. Uh, more secondary controls before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, axes commands and... What do I want? Uh, nope, nope, nope. Propeller and mixture lock. No, that is not it. There we go. Throttle. Uh, here it is here. So again, I just double click the spot, click in here, move the throttle that I want to use. Now again, let me go ahead and show you my super duper fancy pants, um, picture here. Apparently I can't show it. Apparently I can't show it like this. Uh, now can I show it? I can. So the way I um, have my throttle set up here, because I have a split throttle, is um, this, the throttle is split here, is my throttle is the inboard one, so this one here is my throttle, and the propeller is the outboard control. Um, it's conventional in an aircraft that the prop control is closer to the firewall in a fighter, uh, closer to the fuselage skin, and the throttle is closer to the pilot. It's pretty conventional. The Spitfire, it is the other way around, but again, I'd rather keep convention on my throttles um, and just deal with in-game, however. So uh, I'm going to move my throttle here to set throttle and then prop control to set prop control. Sorry, we're going backwards and forwards here a little bit. Uh, throttle, here we go again. Uh, we're not on the VKB, we're on the X56. Now, if you like what I used to be as well, let me just point this out. If you like, I used to have the X56 throttle and joystick. And you're sitting here and you're going, well, the, the thing up top here tells me it's a SciTech Pro X56, but what one? Is it the joystick or is it the throttle? Good question. Well, the simplest way, um, and it's not simple, but the only way I found to do it was hover over it. And then you'll see there it gives you a readout of what it is. So it tells you it's the throttle. If it was the joystick, you'd leave it there. You'll see uh, SciTech Pro Fly X56 Rhino joystick. Uh, and this is how you can tell the difference. And then maybe just write yourself a little note or remember left and right or something like that. But it is difficult if uh, that's a, another little little tippy tip there. Uh, Alright, so let's bind the throttle. Again, move it through its full range once or twice uh, and then it's going to be set and uh, then I'm going to be looking for uh, propeller there should be prop pitch here. Power and mixture lock, that's not it. Engine RPM setting. Of course, that's what they would call it, an engine RPM setting. Uh, this is what I mean by you can't search for things. It's uh, that means No one's ever called it an engine RPM setting lever before in the history of mankind. Uh, a prop control lever or a prop pitch control or anything like that. But no, engine RPM setting, uh, whatever. So uh, there it is there. We'll put that in and again, move the um, axis through its entire range. Uh, I'm going to do this a few times. You could see the um, the button there was changing a few times. Perfect. Uh, and what else am I going to set so I can go into the aircraft and test it? Oh, wheel brakes. Why don't we do those? So uh, the MFG crosswinds, they've got um, uh, brakes left and right. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got my feet up on the um, toe brakes there. This is for wheel brake left. So I'm just going to go ahead and press wheel brake left. See, Joy X is up. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and do wheel brake right. Joy Y, that seems to make sense. Uh, and that's what we've got. So let's just go ahead and test these controls now. Uh, so, oh, we have a problem. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it because I have uh, a bad thing there. We'll come back to that in a second. So let's first have a look. So I'm moving the throttle through its full range. And it's working in the correct sense. Meaning when I push my throttle forward, this throttle goes forward. When I bring it back, the throttle comes back. Same with prop pitch. Then we go prop lever goes forward, prop lever comes back. You get the idea. Okay, that works fine. And what else did we do? We did the brakes. So here's the problem. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but the brakes are actually on hard right now. So when I actually depress my toe brakes on my MFGs, it's actually lifting 
the brakes in the aircraft here. Now, it's hard to kind of see. I don't have um, six degree of movement, but I'll go ahead and tell you I'm now pushing down on the brakes. And when you look at those pedals there, you can see the brakes, the actual pedal is coming up, which means the brakes are releasing. So what's happened is when we've assigned it, it's actually bound the axes around the wrong way. Another catch. you would be like, why aren't my brakes working? I swear I bound them. They're not working. Maybe the left one will show us a bit better. You can kind of see it moving up and down there a little. So uh, let's go ahead and fix it. This is another one of those little tippy tips. So we're going to adjust the controls. I need to deal with the axes here. So let's go here into axes commands. Uh, and uh, we're going to scroll down until we find our brakes. Here they are here. Now, this is where we're going to start doing some fine tuning. So here's our first bit, wheel brake left and right. There they are there. I need to adjust both of these. Now, we haven't talked about anything along this um, bottom thing down here. Now we are. So I'm going to select... I'm going to... No! <laughs> I'm going to select the one that I want, and then I want to tune the axes, which is axes, axis... Uh, ax I don't know, whatever. Um, we're going to go here to the Axis Tune button. And then it's going to allow us some more controls with our already bound control. So I'm going to go to Axis Tune, and this is Wheel Brake Left. So this is going to show me my actual output here. So as I push down on my left brake, we can see here it goes up and it comes back down. Wrong way around though, right? So let's fix it. Very simply, we're going to go here, press invert, all we're going to do. And we're going to see this thing flip around. It's going to look a little bit weird, but it's going to do the same thing. And now we've inverted the axes, so we're able now to see the brakes correctly. So let's go, okay, we'll do this for the right-hand brake as well. I did it wrong again. Don't double-click it, just press it once, axis tune, hit the invert button, and then we're going to go okay. After we've done that, now when we jump back into our cockpit and I depress the brakes, we can see the brake, the, the toe brakes are actually working in correct sense where they're going down. We got the brake set. Wonderful. Now the control check. Oh, great. Just like that, we've, uh, we're almost ready to actually um, go flying. Uh, everything else except starting this aircraft we'll be able to do with the, um, the buttons here. The reason why I'm saying starting is... Uh, I will go ahead and start the aircraft for you so you can see. Uh, but even when you're starting the real Mustang, um, and I have a little bit of time working on a Mustang in real life, and uh, uh, starting the thing, you need three hands. You, re you really need three hands. You've got one hand on the mixture, you've got one hand trying to hold the stick all the way aft, and then you've got the starter lever up, and you're uh, trying to hold the primer, and you, you need a third set of hands to bring the mixture up and hold the stick back. And uh, where the stick position is, is uh, you can't can't use your legs uh, like you can on, say, a small aircraft like a Cub to hold the stick. Like you can't just squeeze your legs together because your toes are all the way forward holding onto the brakes so you don't lurch forward and run in, careen into um, anyone standing in front of you. So it's a, it's a very, very hands-on aircraft to start in real life. And you need to bind buttons to make starting this thing easier. So I will go ahead and show you that quick demonstration with the startup here um, a little while. What I want to do now is show you some more fine-tuning of the controls. Right now, I have a one-to-one -one stick movement here, where when I move my stick to its full travel, so here I'm in neutral, and I go all the way to the end, if I'm halfway uh, in between the travel here, so there's a zero, let's call that a zero travel, this is 100%. If I go 50% travel on my stick at home, I'm seeing a 50% travel on the stick in the cockpit. This is not much use to us in a flight sim. Unless you've got a stick extension or things like that, you don't have enough granularity um, to actually fly the aircraft, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, accurately enough. That, that you can't put in small little control inputs because a small little control input on this is a large control input there because it's a one-to-one. -one. So what we're going to do is put in a curve and I'll give you my recommended curves um, to have for this particular aircraft. So I'm going to adjust the controls. We're going to go back to our axes. You can see this does take a lot of time, right? Like it's, it's uh, when you get used to it, you can run through it a bit quicker because you know what you need to do. 
but uh, it, it, it just takes time setting up the controls. It's uh, clunky, and uh, I'm honestly surprised that uh, um, more people don't have issues with getting a control set up here. But anyway, so let's go here to uh, uh, let's go to pitch and roll. So uh, pitch here, there we go. I'm going to now tune this axis again back down here at this button. So I've got my uh, pitch or elevator control selected and I'm going to come down here and press this axis tune button. Now what I'm going to do is put some curves in and just deal with my control. Um, so the first thing we'll do is let's just put in a curvature. Now what a curvature means is that, as I was saying, it's a one-to-one. -one. So if I'm at 0% and 100%, if I'm anywhere in between, it's a direct relationship. What a curve does is it kind of adds a curve to it. I didn't know who would have thought. So uh, what I do for the Mustang typically is I'll set a curve of anywhere from 22 to 25. And what this means is I get lots of fine fine control inputs there. So now when uh, I add a control input, when I add a control input, uh, there's the more I deflect, the more I deflect my control at home. So let's say I'm pulling back, um, the more the faster the rate of change is in the aircraft. But if I'm adding a small little input here, my deflection isn't as large. So I can go ahead and show you that here just in the cockpit, is that um, if I'm at a 50% deflection on my stick at home, uh, you can see that I'm actually somewhere around a 60% 60% deflection of the stick in the aircraft. And what that means is that this extra 50% in the middle, this 50% of movement, gives me a 60% range in the aircraft. So I have a lot more fine control um, with small inputs. So if I just put a tiny little input on my stick here, I get a tiny little input of um, deflection in the aircraft. It's just how my joystick scales to a real life size. A real size joystick has a control deflection range in, in a Mustang of, well, nearly a foot and a half. Like it, literally it's a foot and a half. The control stick can move from there to there. It's, it's a huge, huge control range. My stick at home has a control range of this. Uh, and uh, that doesn't necessarily translate well into the simulator. So set a curve you will be happy. On something like the Mirage 2000, I'll set a curve sometimes up into the 30s. Um, just because it's such a sensitive aircraft, into the 30s gives me a little bit more control over the plane. So just uh, another tip. So uh, let's go, and I need to do that. I did that for pitch. I need to do it for... Yeah, I, I need to do it... Fuck! Wrong button. I need to do it for um, roll. Uh, I need to do it for roll. Um, I was showing you the wrong thing there. Uh, let's, uh, go back into it. I hope that saved everything. Uh, access commands, and... Tell me you saved! Did. Okay. Phew! Uh, yeah, let's do it with roll. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Uh, same thing, 25. This should actually demonstrate it a little bit better. Ah, oh, that's much better. So, okay, um, I, I, I was trying to show you pitch and I changed it for roll. Rookie mistake. So yeah, if I go ahead and show you this again, uh, if I move my stick all the way to there and I go to halfway deflection, yeah, this is better. So if I put in a 50% deflection of my stick at home, um, watch how far the stick actually deflects in the aircraft. As soon as I close up the canopy here, just the shortcut for that is control C. Or you can um, press the button. So if I go to a 50% control deflection here, have a look how far that's actually moving the stick. It's only moving the stick in the aircraft maybe an inch or two. Well, it's probably two inches. So 50% deflection now equals, in the aircraft, two inches of stick movement. 50%, two inches of stick movement. 50%, two inches of stick movement. When I go past that 50%, it starts scaling out very, very quickly. So you'll see um, the, the actual stick speed actually increases as well. It's not really a problem in this aircraft because it um, because of its control loading, but uh, it doesn't make it fly like uh, it doesn't make it fly any weird or anything like that. So that is a much better demonstration. 50% deflection. Um, you can see I kind of keep it within uh, this this little panel here, where before it would have been out there somewhere. So if I go ahead and try and line that back up, 
Oh, I can't because I'm lost. Uh... You get the idea. I'm giving up. <laughs> I give up. Uh, so, there we go. So, I've got some um, granularity now to my actual controls. The next thing I'll show you is the dead zone. Now, for most of you guys, you're probably pretty aware of what the dead zone is and how it works, but... I'll go... Oh, I'm so bad. Don't double-click it. When you want to tune it, press it once. Press access tune. Dead zone. What is the dead zone for? Well, what the dead zone does is um, it gives you a minimum control input until the aircraft starts actually responding. So if I had a, um, say, a, a cheaper stick like a, um, a Logitech 3D Pro, the Logitech 3D Pro or even the X56 stick, um, it, it doesn't do a very good job in the center point of the stick. So when, you're, when the stick is in neutral, you need quite a lot of breakout force to get the stick to do anything, and it kind of makes flying really clunky. And the same thing is true with a, a control that doesn't have, say, a hole sensor or um, a high-quality sensor in it. We can fly around bad joysticks um, with dead zones and curves. So uh, anyone that ever tells you you need to have a Thrustmaster Hotas to fly any airplane or they're all crap is wrong. You can fly around the problem just like you can in real life. And we're going to use the dead zone here to fix that. So my stick here is fantastic, so I don't need to have that big of a, a dead zone here. Um, but when I had the... Um, the uh, X55 stick, which is just down here beside me, I'll typically set a dead zone of 7 to 8. There are about 6, 7 to 8, somewhere in there, whatever feels good for you. And what that would mean is that I would need to move the stick, if you look really, really closely, uh, let me just exaggerate this, is I would need to move this, physically move my joystick at home to those points before the simulator would actually start picking up an input. So this is good for sticks that have high control breakout forces like the X56, and by high I mean it's just um, not a linear uh, a linear um, thing, uh, or sticks that don't have very good sensors. Um, we, can, we can deal with them with this. So it means that I need to move my stick to one of those points, then the sim is going to start picking up that input. I'm so sorry I have cat allergies right now, guys. Uh, so I, I need to move my stick, and, and if I showed you this in pitch, um, I need to move my stick here that far until the simulator will start picking up any, any of the control inputs. So if you have a clunky stick, or you have a really crappy dead zone, or you have a really crappy anything else, or you get lots of noise um, from the stick uh, close to the center point, Give yourself a dead zone, and it will work really well. The VKB Gladiator is a phenomenal stick, and it's like $84 at the moment. If you're in the market for a stick, look at these. $84, it has um, the sensor quality of the Thrustmaster Hotas, without a doubt. Without a doubt, um, and it's 300 Well, the, the stick alone is, what, $250, $260? So it's uh, a good $140 cheaper than the Thrustmaster stick, and it's as good quality. Uh, I, I don't know how they do it so cheap, but it's a fantastic stick. So anyway, um, I typically set myself for the, the VKB a dead zone of one, uh, a one or two, depending on what aircraft. Uh, and that one or two dead zone, it just gets rid of any uh, any shake in my hand. It just gets rid of any shake, or as, um, let's say, my hands were off the controls, and I was putting my hand back on the stick, that little bobble, um, it now no longer translates into the flight model. So uh, it, it just gives me that little bit of room there. So a, a dead zone of one or two works absolutely fantastic. And I do the same in the Mustang. I have these same settings for roll and pitch. So... Don't do what I do. Stop double-clicking. Press it. Axis tune. Curvature 25. We've already done that one. So let's go pitch. Axis tune. We've done that one. Um, that's one. And this should be... Oh, no. We don't have a dead zone there of one. Perfect. There we go. So now you should have the basics here of getting your axes done. This should get you into an airplane and get you flying. I'll show you the other buttons that I set for the Mustang. 
um, that will make your flying a little bit better and uh, a, a little bit uh, easier to use. So if this is all you were here for, is to just see um, how to, to bind some controls and get them feeling good in the simulator. Uh, thank you for sticking out. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you wanted to see um, the other buttons I use, which are aircraft specific for the, um, the, the Mustang, and I'll show you the Spitfire as well, what I set for the brakes, um, hang around and I'll go over that now, even though we're already getting to... Holy crap! 60 minutes already. Sorry. Uh, oh, well, uh, whatever. So, <laughs> let's uh, let's set the rest of these buttons. I didn't think I'd be here. I thought it was going to be a 15-minute video. Uh, I was wrong. So, buttons for getting the Mustang started. Uh, let's do that. Um, so, what do I usually say? Oh, yeah, uh, again, um, have a look at the... Uh, um, the little sheet link will be down in the description or that other annotation to see what these buttons are. But let's um, work my way. Uh, well, actually, we'll start over here on this right hand side and, and work our way across for the, the, the switches that I need. First thing I'm going to do is set a zoom control. This is another button I typically set. Um, because I don't have track IR, I don't have that forward and aft translation uh, of my viewpoint, so I need to set it to my throttle. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just go into axis commands and I set zoom view, and I put it onto my um, uh, X56, the lower twist knob, the th lower thumb twist knob. Uh, and we'll put that in there. Yes, tune it and add a little bit of a dead zone. It's one of the, uh, the the few ones I put a dead zone on. So now you can see I have a uh, zoom function here. So, all right, over on the uh, right-hand side of the uh, cockpit here, this is all of our um, uh, battery switches. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the gen on. We'll get the battery on. I don't care about any of these other switches. You could turn on these are all your tail lights and stuff like that. You don't need them. You're a combat aircraft. Uh, the other thing that we care about, uh, I, I don't typically... I used to bind the battery switches, but... You turn them on once, and you typically leave them on for your entire session when you're flying the aircraft. So um, I, I don't bind these buttons anymore. I just leave them. I just come through the cockpit, switch them up, and that's it. So this is kind of like a mock startup um, checklist as well. So I start on the right, and I move my way across to the left. This is how I start the aircraft up. Okay, for some reason, our oxygen is already on, so... Should it be? I don't know why my oxygen blinker's on. Anyway, uh, the, the battery's on here. We'll go ahead and move the stick out of the way. I want to start it off the left main tank as standard. Fuel cutoff, again, one of those things you touch once and then you never touch it again, so we'll get the fuel cutoff on. And we make sure our T-handle is in, which means we've got hydraulic pressure. Um, well, it actually it just um, closes up the hydraulic bypass valve. But anyway, uh, after that, we'll just... Uh, this is kind of a cheat checklist, okay? So um, it's kind of cheat where I work from the right to the left. Uh, the real aircraft, you'd come back and then you turn the mags on later but, um, for safety and stuff like that, but uh, who cares? We're not going to chop anyone up. So get the mags all the way over there to both. Um, you can start this thing off the, um, the, the left-hand mag only. Uh, is it left or the right-hand mag? Mm, I can't remember. In any case, typically just set it to both. Um, in some manuals, they'll say just start off one magneto, uh, but to uh, start off both, it's fine. After I've done that, uh, I'm going to unlock the starter, and uh, we've got a fuel boost pump on there as well, uh, and a primer. These are the switches I actually bind. I bind the starter and I bind the primer because I need both of them to start the aircraft. So let's go ahead and bind those. Uh, we'll search, we'll just search for starter. X56, and I set this to the top switch on the X56. Again, just um, have a look at the thing. And I have it for pushing up. So I push it up to start. The other one I need is primer. There's the primer. I'll go ahead and set that again as well. Spam the button a few times. Button 16. Okay. And so I can now check these switches here. I'll just go ahead and turn the battery off so we don't actually spin the prop. But I can check these switches now. So I can see the starter moves up. Even if the button's covered, I can just press it twice and then the starter button works. And there's my primer switch there. It works as well. 
Uh, okay, what else? Um, okay, so I've got those buttons bound. The next thing is I want to get my throttle set. So I'll get the prop set to full fine, and I'll open the throttle here just a tiny little bit, just so I can start seeing, uh, say, the D or the E there. I just want the throttle open just a tiny, tiny little bit. After I've done that, I confirm the mixture here is set to um, idle cutoff. And then aileron trim, rudder trim, we'll set those. We're not going to do a pre-takeoff stuff. So anyway, let's get the, the battery back on. The next thing we care about in the Mustang or anything with the Merlin engine is uh, actually the radiator control. And this aircraft has a three-position switch here. Uh, and it, the real aeroplane actually works. This one, it doesn't. It's kind of stupid. But um, here's our three-position switches. I set buttons to open these or close them. Um, I, I typically manually control my radiator, um, my radiator valve, uh, my radiator doors, the oil cooler doors and the um, radiator doors here uh, because the auto function doesn't work like it should in the real aeroplane. So uh, take the control yourself. So we'll adjust the controls, we'll search for some buttons here and let's go radiator. And we can see both of them are there, radiator coolant, maybe the water, and then we have uh, oil open and close. So, how am I going to do this? I typically go back over to my X56, and these are the buttons beside the X56. So if you've got that chart up there, you'll be able to see what they are. So uh, maybe I'll just pop it up here. I don't know if I can again. There we go. So the switches I use here are those two. So I use this bottom one for the radiator. You can see it down there, bottom one for the radiator, and this one here for the oil cooler. Those two switches there. For the starter, I use these top ones. So this one here is the starter, and then that one there is the primer. That's a P. There you go. You get the idea. Uh, let's go here. All right, so let's set those buttons. Uh, what do I want? Adjust controls. Search radiator again. Now, I want it to be... I, I'm just going to set it to open and close, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so X56 uh, coolant, I typically go for the bottom one. Yes, yeah, so coolant is going to be my bottom switch. So open is going to be down close is going to be up. Anything up means you go fast, right? So anything up is you're closing it to make the aircraft go faster. Everything down means you're dirtying the aircraft up. So radiator down, spam that button, and then I want to close it. Now you notice with the X56 is we don't have three position switches, but it's fairly simple to manage. I'll show you that here in a second. There's up, uh, and radiator for the oil. We're going to do the same thing. Oil down, and close up. Now the reason why I don't care about the automatic function is, like I said, it doesn't really work, and it's very simple to make it go to automatic. So what I mean by that is if I go ahead here and open both of these doors, and I'll open them and show you where they are on the outside of the aircraft here. So I'm just holding my buttons down as the, the doors open. And there's no way of knowing whether they're fully open or not. Um, you just have to uh, hold them down and wait. Now, after you've done it, this is why I don't care about the automatic switch. Is because let's say um, I'm cruising around, I've got everything all the way open here. Let me um, show you the underside of the aircraft. Uh, there's this great big door at the back here is the radiator, and there's an oil one. You can just kind of see a little bit of it there. That's the oil, um, the oil door there, and this is the radiator door here. So I've got it all the way open. So if I've got everything all the way open here, um, the, the aircraft's going to be flying along, uh, all nice and cool, very draggy though, and not really performing very well. Let's say I get bounced, or all of a sudden I want to do some go fast or fun things. All I have to do when I'm flying here is look down, press these with a mouse. Press those covers with the mouse, and just right away they go back to automatic function. Very, very, very quick. But for me, I like having them open all the time so I don't overheat on the ground uh, and uh, I, I can just manage them in flight. It just gives me something 
It does give you a little bit extra to do in the air, but uh, who really cares? It works. Uh, it, it does a fine job. Just keep them open and uh, close them up as you see fit or put them on auto when you're about to fight. But the auto function never works. I, I don't know why. It's just really bad coding where um, the auto function, the doors should continue to open as temperature increases. But what happens is the doors will be all the way closed. The temperature in this thing will go through 130 degrees and all of a sudden your engine will seize and the rad doors will be completely closed. The real aeroplane, they start opening. The, the hotter and hotter you get, the more the rad doors open, adds drag, uh, blah, blah, there's a whole heap of other um, things that happen there, but the way they've coded it here, it just doesn't work too well. Um, well it doesn't work at all. So I just control the radiators manually. All right, so let's start the thing up. Let us go ahead and start the thing up. Put my money where my mouth is. Let's go ahead and open the throttle again. I've got the radiator doors all the way open. And the other thing I'm going to do here is just bring my carburetor air control all the way up. And uh, we've got our, um, uh, our ram inlet air here, the, the, temper the air temperature control here um, all the way forward. As I haven't done anything here with um, uh, elevator trim, you can go ahead and set that for your little hat button, however you want it. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so this is why I need um, the buttons um, for starting. So I've got the throttle set, I've got the fuel on. Let's go ahead and turn uh, the fuel boost pump on. We'll just turn that on until we see green. Okay, perfect. Now we can go ahead and turn that off. Turn that off, fuel boost pump off. Perfect. Open up the starter, and then we're just going to look outside. Uh, and I'm going to prime the thing for three. There's one, there's two, there's three. Now I'm going to start it. So I'm going to bring the starter up. As I bring the starter up, I'm going to bring the primer on, which is hopefully going to catch the engine. When the engine starts to catch, I then need to take my mouse over here and right-click this M, so it'll drop the mixture down to run. Uh, so the mixture is all automatically controlled here. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's go hit the starter. Okay, starting to fire. I now hold down the primer because the engine will sit here on the primer all day long. And I'm good to go. Didn't have my feet on the brakes. Remember that time where I was saying you should always have your feet on the brakes so you don't run ahead and run over the guy in front of you? That was indeed that time. So uh, I... Once the engine starts catching, you don't need to rush and push your way around uh, the cockpit here. Um, you can, let's just shut it down and I'll show it to you again. You don't need to rush and move your way around the cockpit. Is the engine will happily sit at um, idle uh, running just off the primer. So why I have those two buttons bound is so I don't need to rush and look around the cockpit and drop things. And oh fuck, I missed the start and all these other things. Uh, I, I can just do it nice and calmly and fairly easily. Hold the primer, one, two, three, bring in the starter. It's starting to crank, still holding the primer switch on. You can see it there, I'm just holding the primer switch on. Engine's just catching and doing its thing. Now I can come to the mixture switch, take it over to run, wait for it to start, come off on the starter. I'm still holding it on the primer, so I'm running a little bit rich. Go ahead and close up the primer now. Check the RPMs at a thousand and we've got some oil pressure which we do, we can see the oil pressure there is a little bit higher. Simple as that. Having those two buttons means I don't need to do all sorts of weird things. If you try and do this yourself with just with, without having these buttons bound, is it's a bit of a pain. Because you need to hold the starter button up, transition, and oh, okay, I need to add a little bit of primer. You can't click enough things to get the aircraft started. So set these buttons, you'll be fine. The aircraft will start every time if you just run through that fairly simple uh, lowbrow um, startup cycle there. That's the Mustang. Congratulations. Um, set all of the other buttons that you want. You can add your pew pew buttons, um, like your trigger buttons, um, bomb release, gun uh, rocket release, all of those other things. Um, you've now got the skills to do that. The only thing I want to show you uh, is uh, the Spitfire, I guess. The Spitfire has weird brakes, and because of that, I just want to show you the one thing, that one simple trick I use for the, for the Spitfire um, to make things just make sense. No! Oh! Whatever. The aircraft's going to be running. So with the Spitfire, it has a very different brake system where it has a um a handle a a squeeze handle which um uh, gives you a certain amount of brake pressure and then you distribute that brake pressure through your rudder pedals 
So I'll just uh, make sure we've got a 1,000 RPM set in here. And that's the handle right here. You can see me moving it up and down. And in fact, if you look down at your brake indicator here, you can see what's happening. So what this indicator here is doing is showing how much brake pressure is going to each individual wheels, uh, each individual wheel. So when my rudder pedals here are neutral like this, there's equal pressure going to each wheel. But if I go ahead and deflect my brakes, you can now see that I have all of the pressure going to the left wheel none of it going to the right, meaning the aircraft is going to turn to the left. But there's no tow brakes. Like the Mustang we set binds for the tow brakes, however, with this aircraft we don't have that. Now there's a few ways that we can deal with this. One of them is to think of it as just like a Mustang and set the tow brakes, uh, or use another axis somewhere. Um, it's There's no simple there's no simple answer here. I'm lucky because um, on the VKB, I have a uh, random throttle slider here that I can use for whatever I want. And I use it for brakes. I use it for that um, brake, uh, that little brake lever there. And then I can just use my uh, rudder pedals. I, I put in a certain amount of brake pressure and rudder pedals. And I can taxi around all day like this and it, it works fairly well. If you don't have a spare axis though, it can be a little bit of a problem. The way I did it is, um, and it worked okay, is I go here into my axis control, I go to brakes, these wheel brakes down here, analog. I go to my MFG crosswinds, and I bind both the left and the right toe brake. So I go ahead and put that in there, I do it once, I've got joy Y, and then I go back in, and I put in joy X. So what that means then is I can add, let me just go ahead and disable this. Well, what that means then is it makes a little bit more sense where I can now make these rudder inputs. Oh, I've, got, I've got to invert these, sorry. Adjust the controls. I need to invert it, and I need to do the second one here and invert it there as well. Okay, so now it's going to make sense. So now, no matter what toe brake I press, you'll see the brake lever moving. So I'm now going to press my left toe brake, right toe brake, left toe brake. You can see all, all, all that's happening there is that the handle's moving. When you look at the brake uh, control thing over on the side there, You'll see it doesn't matter if I touch the left or the right brake, which wheel the pressure goes to. There's no, there's no change. The way I then distribute this pressure to make the aircraft turn is adding in rudder. So why this makes a, a little bit more sense, or is it's kind of easier to use to get the Spitfire moving, is, well, if I want to go to the right, well, I just put in right rudder input. I put in right rudder input, and then I add a little bit of brake, and I can adjust how much how much brake pressure by just being on the toes. So it kind of works a little bit more like a conventional aircraft um, for the fact that it kind of now works like pseudo toe brakes. It's not like the real aeroplane, but believe me, when you're trying to taxi this thing for the first time, it uh, and you're trying to use a slider or something like that to um, give you the brake. It just doesn't. It doesn't compute. It, it doesn't make sense in your brain, uh, unless you're one of those people that can, you know, can tap your head, rub your belly, and play the drums all at the same time. Um, you're not. It's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make uh, logical sense to uh, the control inputs we're used to. So this system here of having both axes bound to the lever here does work. It will get you out of trouble. Um, I, 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 now that I'm used to this, having this little um, bind there on this throttle, it works, but hey, not all of us have that, so there it is. Anyway, I think that will get you started. Um, I, I think that will get you started for um, getting some piston engine aircraft in the air. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I may have, though. Probably. We've gone over... Adding the binds, adding a dead zone, tuning the axes for the aircraft. Oh, I didn't talk about the, um, the what I use for this. I typically use 25 or 28 um, in the... Uh, 
the curves, the control curves. 25 or 28 for the Spitfire. 28 if you're just starting out because it's incredibly pitch sensitive. Uh, so I would go 28 in roll. Sorry, 25 in roll and 28 in pitch if you're just starting out um, in the uh, in the Spitfire. Uh, it just it's very very pitch sensitive. It really is. Um, but I, I think that should get you started. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, ask me in the description or come into um, uh, my stream over on twitch.tv slash Gaming. Sellout confirmed. Selling myself out and uh, all the stuff that you see up here you should be able to connect up to. Uh, and uh, yeah, hope to see you around. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look after yourselves. I think I wouldn't do. Bye. Oh, cuck it out. These Spitfires are pretty airplane.